Stanisław Ignacy Witkiewicz was born on the 24th of July, 1885, in Warsaw, Poland. His mother, Maria, was a music teacher, whereas his father, Stanisław, was a writer and painter. Already at the age of five, Ignacy was painting, and at the age of eight, wrote his first play. Stanisław was anti-institutional, so he homeschooled young Ignacy. He taught him painting. His mum taught him music. Ignacy also had a governess. When he was 15, Witkiewicz became fascinated with photography. These three branches of activity and a love for philosophy would be the backbone of his creative output for the rest of his life. In 1905, the 20-year-old Witkatze began studying at the Academy of Fine Arts in Krakow. Was his father happy? No. But Witkiewicz decided to study anyway. In Krakow, he lived with the anthropologist Bronisław Malinowski. At the age of 28, Witkiewicz met Jadwiga Janczewska. They fell in love and became engaged. Unfortunately, their happiness was not to last. A year later, Jadwiga committed suicide. <laughs> Witkiewicz was devastated. In comes Malinowski, who takes his dear friend on an escapade to Australia. Mm. This trip will be an important formative experience for the young artist. Another formative experience will be the return mm. to Europe, where he enrolls in the Russian army. After experiencing the horrors of war, he leaves the army in 1917. In 1918, he returns to Poland, where he helps his mother run a guest house in Zakopane. He writes essays and plays and paints extensively in the 1920s. Unfortunately, recognition and money do not come. Mm. So in 1925, he gives up oil painting and begins drawing portraits. He dons the nickname Witkatze and runs a one-person portrait company. Witkatze had a string of lovers mm -hmm. and a wife. When the Second World War started in 1939, he and his last lover, Czesława Oknińska, fled from Warsaw, where they were currently living. When they found out that the Red Army had crossed the Polish border on the 17th of September, they decided to commit suicide. Oknińska survived an overdose of pills. Witkatze didn't have such luck. After the war, his creative output was championed by other artists, playwrights and writers, and Witkatze has since become an icon of Polish culture. But let's get back to 1925, in which the S.I. Witkiewicz Portrait Painting Company was founded. And let's take a look at what we can learn from Witkatze. First, some basics. Your tools. First off, you need soft pastels. This is the main tool that Witkatze used in his later life uh, as uh, a portrait artist. They're called soft pastels, but they're actually hard if it goes about touch, but they're very delicate. And it's good to avoid breaking them into pieces, because the longer they are, the more control you have over them. Now for paper. Uh, normal copy paper isn't the best of ideas. You'd rather want something uh, with texture, such as this block of recycled paper. It has wonderful texture. Uh, it's actually got the same thickness as uh, normal copy paper. Or you can go with harder paper, um, which is definitely more elegant. It's also textured, uh, so it helps um, the pigment of the soft pastel cling on uh, better. your position. Try sketching yourself for starters. It's good to have an easel, or if you don't have one, uh, just prop the block of paper or a piece of paper on something hard on your knee, so you have it as vertical as possible. Notice how my head doesn't move at all. I'm actually moving my eyes only, so I'm looking from the picture to myself in the mirror with just minimal movement of my eyes. I don't have to bob my head up and down. This is the wrong way to draw. Having uh, the paper on a desk, let's say, and looking up at the model or at a photo reference. 
This way, I see either one thing or the other, either the model or the picture. I don't see one and the other at the same time, which is very, very important. Putting the paper on the desk also distorts what you actually see. And that's why now I have to fix up the head because it's cone shaped instead of properly round. You think that you can actually use any tool on a normal A4 size paper, but that's not true. I draw a line with this, and now I'm going to draw another line with a pacer, with an automatic pencil. And notice that this line is uh, perfect if it goes about such a small piece of paper. With an automatic pencil, I can easily draw a face on such a small format, and it makes sense. If I try to draw a face with a soft pastel at the same size, look how uh, low the resolution of the picture is. It's just impossible to catch all those little details with such a tool. That's why I need to draw at a larger scale. Now I'll draw an eye, and I have the freedom to draw each line and all the details of the eye just as I need to. So as you can see, if I'd want to properly draw a face, I can't have a little piece of paper. The bigger the piece of paper, the better. Of course, uh, that gives additional problems, such as how am I going to prop a giant piece of paper on my knee if I don't have an easel? Well, you have to decide what's going to be best for you. This also means that the pictures are very delicate. What happens if I'll just move my fingers around this picture? It's worth noting that soft pastels are very dirty. Uh, they leave a lot of pigment, so as long as you're drawing on a desk, uh, there aren't any problems. But when you're going to be propping uh, the paper up on, let's say, your knee, uh, you're definitely going to have a lot of powder on uh, your pants. Just take a look at this. Well, that's very dirty, so you have to clean up your desk or your workstation uh, very regularly while drawing with soft pastels. And there you have it, absolutely ruined. What can I do to avoid such situations? That's why it's absolutely essential to have fixative. Let's just make a quick drawing. A bit of color, a bit of smudging, a bit more color. And now we just take hairspray. Find the strongest hairspray you can, it can be the cheapest one, it'll do the job. Just look. Now we of course have to wait for it to dry. You can use a hair dryer or you can just go make yourself a sandwich and come back after about 15 minutes and everything's going to be a-okay. Let's do the finger test. If you do use thin paper, then you remember that it's not going to be absolutely flat after you've used a fixative. This may prove a problem with scanning, because you're going to have a wavy picture with lighter and darker areas just because um, of the uneven paper. So when you're scanning, just take a book for it to fit into the frame of the scanner and for it to cover the whole picture and that way you're going to get rid of all those uneven areas. And now we're ready to start. Drawing a la Vitkatsi. What's worth noting about his portrait company was the fact that it had a very clear instruction. He drew portraits in five different types. Let's take a look at type A. Type A portraits were done for the most paying customers, uh, so they had to be attractive, they had to be delicate, they had to give the character of the um, person that was being portrayed, but in a realistic manner, um, with uh, the exception of the background, which was quite fantastical at times, uh, and uh, will keep in that vein while drawing the background for this picture as well. I'm of course drawing myself, and I am cheating because I've broken all the rules that I've told you about 
uh, by laying this uh, piece of paper down in front of the camera on the desk uh, so I can show it to you most properly. It's quite an uncomfortable position for me, so I'm just going to sketch out the basics here and then I'm going to finish it off already in a different position. Remember that pastels are not actually a drawing tool, they're a painting tool. Notice how you can smudge them together, how you can combine them together. Don't actually only use them for smudging. Smudging is good to uh, cover the background so you don't have all those uh, white spots. But then it's better to cover and cover and cover more and more layers of pastel one on the other using different colors. This isn't about emulating the exact style of Bitkatze. Uh, this is about finding inspiration using certain tools and elements of his practice and trying to create something that's absolutely only yours. Let's see another type of portrait. In the rules of his portrait company, Bitkatze states that a type B portrait is one drawn objectively, um, showing the character of the person, uh, quite nice, um, without caricature, but it's drawn more freely and it has more character, uh, and there's an emphasis more on line art. So this time I'm going to avoid smudging as much as I can. I'll concentrate uh, indeed on uh, just drawing lines and just using um, the tool to color in everything with lines. Remember not to use black on the main parts of the picture. Uh, try to use any other colors uh, as outlines. Even though this film is sped up, you can notice what colors I'm using. Now I'll draw a background and I can also fix the edges of the character that I drew using this red color. Now just a bit of background if it goes about mountains. Notice that I'm not smudging. Don't be fixated on what you think is the correct color. Skin has to be skin colored. Remember, this is a painting tool. Don't be afraid to experiment and suddenly have half a face blue and half a face orange and then do something else. Do all you can and experiment with light, with color. Type C portraits are the ones that everyone's interested in. Why? Because they were drawn while under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Each picture has certain letters written on it, so we know that this is a type C portrait drawn while being influenced by cocaine. Due to obvious reasons, I will not be showing you how to draw such a portrait. <laughs> Luckily, we have type D portraits, and these are supposed to emulate type C portraits but without the use of any narcotics. So here you can indeed just go wild and uh, let yourself improvise with color, with form, with shape. Change your character, your sitter, into a cat. Why not? And the resemblance doesn't actually have to be there. Important to catch a certain element of the character uh, even if it's not too similar. And then there were type E portraits. These were reserved for children who fidgeted and moved very often and for clients who are too conservative for other types of portraits. It got to despise drawing such portraits and these were the cheapest in his offer. I'm drawing my daughter Greta here and this time I'm doing it by the rules that I told you about. So I'm actually just moving my eyes so I can see her and the picture that I'm drawing at the same time. Uh, this way I can capture her even if she's moving her face and her fingers. Make something interesting out of the portrait. I always wanted to see how to capture the light of a screen uh, shining on someone's face. And Greta is the ideal model for such an experiment. The finishing touches after the sitter has been relieved. And now let's take a look at all the portraits, one next to the other. You can see the differences in style.
Let's finish off with signing the picture. Vitkatsi, of course, signed his portraits with his nickname, Vitkatsi, with the date. And if it was a type C portrait, you can guess that there were additional letters that gave you information what he was using at the time of drawing. I hope this tutorial was helpful and inspiring. Now it's your turn to take some soft pastels and work wonders on a piece of paper. Thank <laughs> you.